I spent the majority of my time studying and a very small actual period of time actually placing trades. Yeah. You know, I was under PDT, so I was mostly watching, mostly studying your stuff, Kratani stuff. What's up, Tim Sykes here with the man Roland Wolf. What's up, Tim? Welcome back to Italy. Thanks for having me. How again. does it feel? We're going to throw a little flashback from the last time. What was it? Four years ago? Three years ago? 2017. I don't even know, dude. Yeah, four years ago. You were passing 100,000 then. What are you doing now? Now we're at 1.8 million in profits. Everybody congratulate Roland in the comments. Say congratulations, Roland, because it's been a hell of a four years. Yeah, it has been. It's been and a hell of a now you have years. new clothes. Look at this. There's little... Italy buttons here. You got new kids too. How many kids are you popping out? We got three and one on the way. So four years, four kids. Why don't you have four million? Why don't you just go four, four, four? To be honest, I thought I thought I would be higher at this point. Like the trajectory I kind of started on yeah. once I really like was plugging away. Yeah. That's what I thought. I thought like it was gonna go. What happened? Half a mil, two mil, what four happened? mil. Are you depressed? No. Um, Honestly, 2018, 2019 seemed to be quite a bit slower. Like a lot of my patterns, a lot of the things that, uh, a lot of the sector momentum and stuff, it just got slow yeah. for a couple of years. So how about 2020, 2021? And then it just blew back up. Yeah. Right? Like the market, like you really cannot take more than the markets can give you. Uh, you know, you hear people say that all the time, but I've now experienced that over the span of basically five years, that it's ebbs and flows. There are times to put the pedal to the metal yeah. and take as much as you can from the market. And there are times where you got to protect yourself and grind. Understand 90% of people watching this don't know what you're talking about because they lose money. Right. How do you even get profitable in the first place? What's the secret? Well, if you're just starting, the secret is obviously study and learn things. You have to learn how the stock market works. Yeah. You got to learn all the very basic stuff. Um, and it, it takes a long time. Yeah. It really does. Like, in how much did you study in the beginning? In the beginning, I wasn't studying hard enough. I was just wanted to trade. So I was just kind of like in a chat, you know, trying to trade. Um, and Why? It was, Why? I always say study hard. I always say learn the patterns before you risk your hard earned money. Why did you ignore me? I think it's Should a, I shout, should no, I shout it's, it's, it's a, my personality type. I'd like to do stuff and try things. So yeah. like to me, yes, I wanted to study, but if there was there, and this is the thing, there are no limitations. Like I didn't have to study to trade like yeah. school. You yeah. have to study to be yeah. a doctor. No, it's too easy. There's no barriers. There's to no barriers. So can you imagine like a first year medical student, like you don't study like, Oh, this guy is about to die here. Here's a scalpel. You throw the scalpel at the doctor and he's fumbling around and he's like trying to like, like that would just be dangerous. No, we have rules, but trading, especially now with commission free, yep. it was just too easy. It was too easy, but I, I, I personally see this two ways. It, and on one hand, yeah, you definitely need to study. If you're going to be put, putting any money into the markets, you need to know what you're doing yeah. at least a little bit. But on the other hand, you also have to get experience like, and I just immediately started getting trading experience, yeah. you know? So I think they do go hand in hand. And at some point the studying will meet the experience. Yeah. And I think that is the point at which most people that I know have gotten to be profitable and then sometimes parabolic. Well, I say this. So I say you have two accounts, your brokerage account and your knowledge account. You have to grow your knowledge account first so much that it tips over, spills into your brokerage account. Then you can grow your brokerage account. Everyone's like, ah, I don't want to study. I don't want to learn. I just want money. You can't have, unprepared lack of knowledge money because even if you do make some money and guess what a lot of people have made a lot of money lately in 2021 they're like what are you talking about we don't need to study you're unprepared you don't realize the risks that you're taking so if you make too much in the beginning you're probably going to lose it over the next few years you know you know like lotto winners most of them go broke most of them lose and it's like how do you lose millions of dollars because they weren't prepared to win the lotto they don't have the financial education so you need the education and going to your point where you say, you know, you have two different things. I would say it's like street skills and book skills, totally, right? Book yeah. smarts, book smart, street, street smarts, smarts yeah. except it's Wall Street smarts, yeah. right? So uh -huh. like trading, seeing this stuff play out over and over again, experiencing it when your money is at risk, then you get the emotional intelligence, book smarts, like you can study everything, but if you never trade and you don't have the emotional intelligence, you're never really going to do well. So how do you balance? How do you find both? I think... I think in terms of the actual experience, if I would have gone back, I mean, I wouldn't change anything, but if I could go back, I'd say, hey, maybe paper trade for a little bit. Yeah. 
at the time when I had started, the community, the trading community kind of frowned about paper trading because it wasn't real money and you're not actually. Yeah. But if, at least if you're doing that, you're watching the markets. You're watching moves. You're yeah. watching for stuff. And cut, like the way I say it, come up with the thesis, watch how it plays out every single day over and over and over again. Um, that being said, like I spent the majority of my time studying in a very small actual period of time actually placing trades. Yeah. You know, I was under PDT. So I was mostly watching, mostly studying your stuff, Kratani stuff, um, anything I could find that resonated with me. Yeah. That's what I did. FYI, uh, you can join the challenge. Roland is one of my challenge students, Turn Masters. You can click the link below. Go apply for the challenge. That's where all my millionaire students come from. When I say study hard, there's DVDs, there's blog posts, there's video lessons, there's archived webinars, which are amazing. Tim Gratani, he mentions, um, has now turned 1,500 into 13 plus million. He's basically taking the last year, year and a half off just to be daddy, right? Yep. Like he's got two beautiful children now. That's fantastic. It's not just about making so much money. I was hoping that you would go into it where, you know, when I said, we kind of got off yeah. the track, yeah, right? yeah. where I said like, you know, you thought you would be higher now. Oh yeah, yeah. I, and, I wanted to keep talking about that too. But you've also lived, right? So like it's, it's two pronged thing. You make a lot of money to live well. I know a lot of people where they make a lot of money, they live terribly and they're depressed. So you have to choose what do you value in your life and you value your family. Yeah, I mean, that's all, that is all I value. It's really all I value. I've bought maybe two things since making any money at all. Yeah. You know, I'm not. I got you your $20,000 You grill. got me a grill. You literally can see the grill, $20,000 grill in this man's backyard. He cooks up some mean carrots I and do. We, uh, use, we use it a lot. And some cucumbers and some onions and Everything. some grilled mushrooms and some, you know, <laughs> sauteed sweet potato. Like, it's an amazing grill. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's awesome. But uh, yeah, my family is what drives me every single day. It's what uh, got me into trading in the first place, you know. Um, I, I told Gratani, I actually got to speak with him uh, somewhat recently just to kind of see what he was doing. And I told, I, I, like dad talk? It was well, like daddy I I, daycare? Yeah, he's like just Did being a dad. He is being a dad right now. And he has the luxury of being able to enjoy every minute of these little babies' lives. Like, it, you know, when, I, when my daughter was born, my second child, I wasn't very present for her because that was 2017. Yeah. So 17 hour work days, 15 to 17 hour days of studying, trading, and then just like a one or two hours that I would devote to them every day, you know, dinner, hang out with daddy for a little bit. But that's what parents do. Parents sacrifice to give a better life to their children. And I would say to all of you parents out there, thank you for everything. Parents, the work is incredible. I'm not a parent myself, but I've seen the work secondhand. Yeah. I'm just like, damn, this is crazy. Um, but also I would suggest if you're watching this and you're not yet a parent and you want to be a parent in the future, study now. Try to make as much as you can before you have kids so then you have better, more quality time with them, right? Yeah. I mean, you have this with, with child number three and number four. Which, which baby did I see? I was the first person. I was randomly in Arizona for an interview. And I was like, hey, Roland, I'm in town. And he's like, oh, I'm in the hospital. I was like, oh, well, come by. I was the first person before the grandparents, before anybody else to hold your baby and I was scared. I was like, I've never held a baby That was before. my second son, my third kid. Oh my God, I yes. was first. Number one to hold that baby, it was crazy, it was funny. And your wife was so amazing. Literally, she had just given birth and I remember she was like cleaning up the hospital room. Cause you know, like when you have a visitor yeah, like over your house, you're supposed to clean. I was like, sit down, like you just gave birth. I don't care if your hospital room is a mess, but literally I was like, this is incredible. Like she was like making the hospital room neat yeah. for me and she was like, I'm sorry, I don't have any food. Like, I don't, that's fine. Like, she's so amazing. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, I love my family. I love yeah. my wife and my kids. Like I said, my daughter's the reason I got into it. Um, and here's the thing. I knew in 17, 16, 17, that if I want to be present for the real, real meaningful stuff that they're going to remember, because don't, we don't remember too much, one, two, three years old. Correct. I'm going to have to bust my ass now. And then by the time my son's playing baseball and soccer and my daughter, she has dance and some things that she likes. And, you know, I have another kid coming. I've got my third son. We got a lot of stuff baby going on. Baby four, you'll be there the whole time. In December. We're right? having our fourth, our what second. What about baby number five in like two or three years? Done. All right. This is on video. This is on video. This, this is on video. Yes. So it counts. The uh, police are going to come after you if you're wrong. It, it, uh, it's perfect for my OCD. Two boys, two girls. We're All right. Good. Cool. Yeah. That's good. Um, no, you know, and it's good to talk about this stuff because most people don't. 
What I love the fact is, you know, with you, you're also now helping others. If you click the link below, you can apply for my challenge, but also Roland has something new where he's accelerating your learning. Talk about that for a second. How are you going to accelerate people's learning? Because you've actually put in a ridiculous amount of time. How do we like make that more succinct? Yeah, so I kind of got into it earlier, uh, but it's something I do like to talk about, which is the trading learning curve. Talk about it multiple sure. times. So we got, uh, we got the trading learning curve, and it's not just one curve. There are kind of two curves, in my opinion. Uh, the first would be learning the basics. You got to learn technical analysis, uh, the basics of technical analysis. Maybe some basic fundamental analysis would be good. Uh, the basics about brokers, how to get orders filled, like what the basic terminology means. And there's a lot of it. Yeah. There's kind of a lot of slang in the community, too. You just kind of have to under learn these things. Um, and that is always up to you. Like, how fast can you do that? That's always up to you. For me, I realize, like, oh, there's all this information to learn. Let's learn as fast as we can. Good. Um, and that's what kind of led me to just studying a ton. Uh, so get through the initial learning curve. But then there will become, there comes a point where, like, you almost hit a wall, I guess, like where you know so much and you feel like you're on the precipice of something, yeah. but something's holding you back analysis from becoming paralysis. profitable. Something like something like that. Um, like that term, analysis yeah, paralysis. Yeah, analysis, analysis paralysis. There's a lot of people who are so smart. We have several millionaire students here. Huddy is one of my newest millionaire students. And for a while, he was one of the smartest non-millionaires. And I hung out with him in Arizona and I was like, you're so smart, but you're just not wealthy yet. Like he just needed the confidence to size up. And I was like, listen, you have the book smarts. Now it's time to put it into practice. Yep. And frankly, he sized up. It was good, fortunate that we were meeting up. I was trying to meet up with a lot of my students and talk with more of my students when the market was so hot in 2021, because that's the time you scaled up. And then he scaled up and now, you know, he's over a million and he can still push himself a yep. little bit more. You know, I think you need to get that book smarts. You need to get that preparation to give you the confidence to bet bigger. You should not bet big in the beginning. What'd you start with? Four grand. You start with four grand, Just you're at 1.8 million. Yeah. What do you say to people who say this is like impossible? Cause now we have, I have 20 plus millionaire students. They all have different stories, but like, you know, Tim Grittani started with 1500. You started with 4,000. I think Kyle Williams, who's in the other room too. He's over 2 million. I think he started with 6,000. I want to say, what do you say to people who say like, this is impossible, even though you show all your trades, like, are we faking it? Are you just a hired actor? No, I don't know. no, it's a hundred percent real. Uh, that's what I thought. Like when I was getting into the game, when I first saw I would you hire better actors than Tim Grittani and Michael Good. They FYI. are terrible actors. Okay? Yes. Mark Crook, like what, what am I searching for? Like the worst actors in the world to be my students. If it were actors, yep. I would have a very different student base. No, it's, but that's, I mean, that's what I thought just, and a lot of it was just my perspective going into like the penny stock realm just from movies and stuff. Like yeah, the, all yeah, you yeah. hear Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street. Street. Yeah. I mean, that's all I knew. You know, hey, that- JB, how's that uh, paying $100 million back to your victims going? <laughs> Not so well, I hear. Oh, huh, that's weird. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, that's what I thought getting into it. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Tim Grittani in particular, I saw some of his stuff and I knew he wasn't an actor. I knew. Listen to him talk for more than five minutes, minutes and you, you know, know that. Yeah, and I'm not trying to be like, I'm just saying like, these are not actors, these are average people and I love them, right? Like this is for average people. We, I mean, they're, we're all here. Like they're people, they're some of my we good six, friends. Six millionaires here in this Italian villa. Pascal will edit in some of our fun. hotter like frankly we had in 2020 2021 that's when you push it but first you need to be prepared all of these six millionaire students in this villa right now have been my student for three four five six years so when the market was slower in 2018 2019 that gave them perspective 
If you just got started in 2020, 2021, fantastic, you're in a hot market, but you probably don't have that much preparation. You don't have that much perspective. Zero perspective almost the way I, here's how I look at it. Like if you started trading in 2020, you really don't know what things can be like. You don't know what you don't know. Well, you don't know what so you, you don't think know. you found the, like a better way, like, oh, I don't need to study this much. Or I don't need a job or I don't need thing. Like they're certain they're like- very spoiled uh, people. But I mean, and the masses came in like Robin Hood, but they were just GameStop, AMC. Like, and they would not, they know nothing about the markets. They just know that someone on Twitter and it's trending and it's going up. But they might call you a boomer and they say, you don't understand. And you're just jealous of their quick games. I don't, I'm not a hater on it. I don't care. Like if, so, if you may, if anyone makes money, then so I be guess. it. I'm, ha I'm yeah. happy for them. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm happy when retail traders make money. But, 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 but when the market crashes when the memes and the mania settles down when the stimulus check funded accounts frankly like churn out and burn out um they're gonna get a very nasty wake-up call so i'm not a hater you're not a hater but i'll always warn like some people are like why are you talking about this like the stocks are at the highs i always warn yeah okay? always with, yeah with a lot of these penny stock pumps like hmbl ltnc ggii alpp abml vper i yeah. mean there's been so many where they went supernova and everyone's like, la -di da it's amazing. And I'm like, yeah, but there's a lot of promoters. When you have a huge increase in, in asset price of a stock, of crypto, of anything, if the fundamentals don't support it, it's not a question of if, it's just a question of when. And I want these stocks, I want these cryptos to go as high as possible, but at the same time, I'm aware of how history works. And I know that there's gonna be a crash and I'm looking forward to the crash, not because I want people to lose money, but because when there's a crash, there's usually a great bounce. That's the number five pattern if you've been watching my framework DVDs. I love the number five pattern. I love dip buying after a big crash. So I can prepare ahead of time knowing how these charts work and say, okay, this is speculative, this is frothy. A crash is likely soon. I don't know exactly when, but when it happens, I'm going to be ready for my bounce. And if you're a short seller out there, if you're evil, if you're unethical, if you're a leper and you like living in a cave and being scared of the world, which you should be short sellers, fantastic. When there's a crash, you can profit too. And then, you know, you can buy your way out of the leper colonies. Do you short sell at all? Not these days. Not really. Why not? Because of what happened last year. I uh, like like all that. Uh, pretend someone knows nothing like most people watch. Okay, that. so in 2016, 17, 18, that's when I was starting, but and I'm sure prior to that, there were the patterns, there was like first red day. Uh, stocks would run and the first day that they went gap down and were going to be red on the day. Yeah. They would get destroyed. The momentum shift. The momentum shifts, <sighs> it would get destroyed all the short sellers pile in on that day. Uh, they all cover maybe a day or two or three or weeks later, yeah. like because they could never, almost never break back yeah, out. Yeah, because the momentum is busted. It's usually the volume was different. Picture a hill yep. and it's just straight, not sometimes no, straight little down, bouncy maybe ball a down. little bounce, but yep. bouncing ball down. Yeah. Yeah. Front side, back side. That's front side, back say. side. So that's still exactly how it works, but the magnitude because of all the new traders last year, the squeezes. The, I mean, we saw like the EV sector squeezed for months, yeah, like yeah, months, yeah, of, you know, yeah. like some of the crappiest little EV stocks going yeah. to 50, 50. Um, you know, we had so many giant squeezes lately that are so much bigger. So like two to 20, two to 40, two to 80, yeah. five to a hundred, five to 500, you know, GME, like GME, it's, yeah. it's literally yeah, yeah. insane before it would be like two to 10, then down three to five, three to seven, then down three to 15 max right. and down. So short selling, I haven't shorted at this point right now in nearly two years. There is money to be made if you're like really meticulous. Yep. But for us as teachers and us as like, we're not very like stressful guys. Like there's some very competitive people. They want to make as much money as possible. They're trying to get as much from the market. You're enjoying your family time. I love to travel. Like you and I have made millions, but we do it in like a, a very low stress kind of way. And I think that's important because a lot of people don't realize like there's different ways to make money. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and that's my whole goal is to be present for my family and provide better lives for them, better anything that I need, you know, if they need coaching, whatever, I want to be able to go ahead and pr provide that for them. Um, so like if someone offered you, let's say a million dollars a year right now, but to take your time. So let's say it would take 50% uh, of the time away from your family, but you get a million dollars a year. Would you do it? No. 
What if it was 25% of your time and a million dollars per year? I don't think so. Whoa, I thought he was gonna crack no. there. What about 10% of your time and a million dollars a year? Maybe 10%. Yeah, come on! I was like, what's your number? You're gonna have 10%. Right? But I was gonna start at like 75%. I knew that would be a no. <laughs> yeah. But like, you have to choose what you wanna do in life. And the reality is that we both get so many messages from people who hate their jobs, they hate their bosses, they're in student loan debt, um, they're in credit card debt, they're building other people's dreams, yeah. and they're working at these jobs that they hate while, you know, basically playing video games, watching fantasy movies, you know, trying to forget the fact that they're miserable. Totally. And, and it's just sad, and they're like, what's the way out? And I'm not saying that we're always gonna make money, like we've both been, you know, very much helped by this hot market, um, but we've been there for it. Yep. And this is what I say, I say it's preparation meeting opportunity. We were prepared and the opportunity presented itself, right? So I make videos like this just to show you real people, like this is a real person, he's not a hologram, Oh, now he's leaning in. Yo, the first time he just went quickly, then he was like, ugh, Korean rock, <laughs> what? Um, what do you think people can do now to prepare for any upcoming crash, any potential bounce, any potential further mania? Like, how do they prepare for 2022, 2023, 24, 25, 30? Like, what can you do today, this week, this month, to be better prepared in the future? I See, I never really thought about like that. I just thought about it day by day. And this is still how I take things. I do have eyes on the future. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do have eyes on the future. I do have thoughts about the future, but I don't get married to them. I try not to predict when things are going to happen because uh, that will usually screw me up mentally. I'm, always, I'm more reactive. Nice. I'm more of a reactive person. Um, so in terms of what you can do going forward, like the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to take day by day, see what happened yesterday. Think about tomorrow, but keep like trading day by day by day. Yeah. Uh, if you're newer, obviously this means studying, watching material, uh, reading books, under, like all the stuff that I talked about earlier in that first learning curve, getting through all that stuff as quickly as you can so that you can get on to the juice, which is the psychological stuff, the emotional stuff, uh, the stuff that goes on in your head that holds you back, essentially. You need to build a foundation of knowledge, right? Like if you look at any building it has a solid foundation if you don't have a solid foundation yeah. no building is going to last through any storm so you need to build that foundation of knowledge his accelerator program my challenge i would do both i know i'm going to get the question like which one should i do do both you cannot over prepare enough you cannot study enough in the beginning some people say oh tim like you always say study hard you've made all this money and you're still studying like why this is not a dream life I'm not talking about myself and he's not talking about himself. How much do you study these days? I only- Because before you used to do 17 hours a day. What do you put in now? Um, I just trade, you know? I'm just, I study the markets. Yeah. I'm a, now I'm just a student of the markets, of the patterns and of myself. And that's the beauty of this. This is not rocket science. Once you go through all the video lessons, DVDs and webinars, once you start seeing this stuff, then it's just about maintenance, right? It's just like, okay, I see the opportunities. Maybe I can learn a little something new. But you're not gonna have to study 17 hours a day. No. I've taught some very uh, stubborn people, okay? Very stubborn Stephen Johnsons who really don't follow rules or pay attention in the beginning. And they still learn yeah. pretty much everything they need to know inside of four or five years. Like, do you agree with that? We yeah, were 100%. here with Stephen Johnson last time in Italy. He was so undisciplined, we went rope swinging and I tied him up with a rope swing so that he couldn't trade. And that's, and that's what I'm, you don't have to trade. You, most people, like I was just kind of obsessed, not kind of obsessed. I was fully 100% obsessed. Why are you saying it like defensively? Like I was yeah. kind of obsessed. Yeah. Be no, obsessed. I was, I was, I was, I mean, that's why, that's the only reason I could do that. I have a lot of ADD, like a lot of, you know, there are a lot of people with it, but I got that ADHD. Yeah. Um, so my mind likes to wander, especially if it's something that doesn't intrigue me and the markets continue to intrigue me. Yeah. That's why I, I love, I love it. No, it's a beautiful challenge. It's not about the money, but with penny stocks, with trading, it's just not rocket science. Yes. You're not going to be studying 34 years and be like, I still haven't figured this out. This yeah. isn't some unsolvable math equation. You just put in a few years of study, you'll be shocked at what you can accomplish and how knowledge compounds year two, year three, year four, year five, if you stick with it. The problem I find with a lot of people is they think that there's gonna be fast money, they wanna be my next millionaire student, they want it to happen overnight, when it doesn't, they get disappointed, yeah. they stop studying. If you stop studying, or if you really tone down your study, you're only hurting yourself, right? Like yeah. some people, they're like frustrated like in month one, month two, month three, and they're like, I should have all this stuff. 
because they have all these expectations. Like I've been putting in three months. I deserve like $12,000. No, no, you don't. You don't deserve anything if you don't study, if you're not self-sufficient. And let me put this thing into perspective for you. Jack Kellogg, who's here, he's somewhere in this yeah. villa. This is a four story villa. It's pretty amazing. He's now made over $8 million, but he made nothing his first 20 months. Okay. So think about that. Uh, Tim Rutani made nothing his first nine months. What did you do? You got, you were fortunate. Um, I wasn't fortunate, but I took your number one rule to heart, which was cut losses quickly. So before understanding anything like we spoke about, that's all I knew. So I wasn't just cutting losses quickly. I was trying to not really take losses. So okay. in a way it, d that does not work, by the way, it like that doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, I've tried that. Oh, it doesn't work. Wait, wait. So you're saying I don't need losses? No, Why did no. I think of this? Yeah, Why do I yeah. have so many losses? I'm no, such a I, No, I just mean that I took it so seriously and I had such a small amount of capital and so much riding on it with my children and my wife uh, that the idea of just going YOLO and like just letting it all hang out, not knowing anything, so your, did not make sense to me. Your responsibilities kept you in check. Yes. And that's good. So some people message me, you have responsibilities. You got a job, you got a family you're in school, that should help you tone things down. Some of you who I'm most worried about when you have no responsibilities, and you're These like, kids, hey, man. YOLO, let's These do kids. this, let's go all in. Don't go all in, don't use leverage. Do you ever use leverage? No. Why? Because I don't need it. I just don't. Well, I don't need as many carbs as I eat, <laughs> I still eat them. Uh, particularly if you're new, yeah, I mean, it allows you to use some more capital, but so, but the losses, that's the problem. They get compounded. You have, you're tr you're trading with more money than you own. The losses get big. The drawdowns get big. I just don't personally recommend it. And I would say it. the risk of loss, okay? A lot of newbies, you're just not prepared for how fast these stocks move. No. So you're using leverage. You're fine on one trade. You're fine on another trade. You may be fine on 10 trades. And you're like, ah, oh, Tim's just being overprotective. And then trade number 11 blows your ass out of the water. Okay. It's the risks. The biggest success that you have will take time. So you need to be there learning, growing your account gradually or not, even not at all in the beginning, even having losses. If you have small losses in the beginning, remember rule number one is cut losses quickly. But even if you have small losses, but you're learning, that's a win. You can call that market tuition. I have some students like Kyle, you know, they literally did not make much money. They even lost money for the first few months, but they learned. You have two accounts, your brokerage account and your knowledge account. I would say if you are willing to lose two, three, four thousand dollars in your brokerage account, it's not fun, but two, three, four thousand dollars is not gonna be life changing in the long run. And if you lose them gradually, let's say like fifty dollars at a time, right? And you take a lot of trades, you get a lot of experience, that two, three, four thousand dollars, I know it stinks, but that is a good market tuition, basically like paying for school, which is far less than some schools, right? And if you can learn a lot. So the two, three, four thousand dollars that you might lose, maybe that's going to help you make fifty or a hundred thousand later on with the lessons learning what not to do. Do you think like that ever? Yeah, I do. I mean, what's your biggest loss? Forty thousand. How did that happen? Short what selling. Happened? Short ah! selling. Uh, I was moving. Ran, total random short sell. Why are you short selling while you're moving? That I wasn't supposed to be doing it. I wasn't even supposed to trade that day. Why? I like came. I like came into the market super late. Uh, it was this Chinese stock that was just like gapping and it was up a ton and down a ton. And then I was just like threw a thousand shares at it. And then it was like <laughs> spike through a thousand shares at it, spike through a thousand shares at it. And like, God damn it. So you tried to dig yourself out. I did the one thing that had never happened to me that I had heard about from Slippery particularly slope. from like Gratani. Yeah. I like I had heard a lot about it. I was kind of jealous I didn't have it either. I'm like, well, I need a cool go. story there like you that. Go. Now and you got it. Your $40,000 yeah. story. Are you happy with it? Not happy, but I don't, but it's a lesson. It is, was the biggest you lesson. You learned what not to do. So anybody who's watching this, who's ever had big losses, you learn what not to do. Remember that. Don't try to block it out. Don't pretend that it didn't happen. Remember how you felt. Remember how you got that way. I had a $500,000 loss once upon a time. It was terrible. I had a giant drinking problem. The press smeared it everywhere. It was like the worst, but it was the best a few years later. It yeah. made me the trader I am today, the teacher I am today. I would not be this conservative. I would not be this effective yeah. without that big loss. Totally. Have you had a big loss since? No, not even, not even close to that. What's the next biggest loss? Uh, probably like five. Yeah, five to six. I've never had another 500,000, yep. let alone 100,000, let alone a 50,000. Yep. Once you have that big scare, you're like, this is the worst feeling ever. I never want to put myself yep. in that position again. Yep.
So you That's learn exactly from your it. wins, you learn from your losses, you get responsible, you recognize that this is a process because this is what, year five, year six of you trading? Yep, six, going into six. The sirens are coming. I Can they hear the sirens? Good, hear the sirens. This is your wake up call. It's gonna take time. Click the link below. The challenge is below. Wolf Accelerator is below. The sirens are in your ears. I'm not making this up. There's literally like an ambulance, probably a short seller who just got squeezed passing by, just had a heart attack. Pray for them. Rest in peace, probably for their brokerage account. Get inspired. 